So how's this for a tent view? Not too shabby. Just left Kilmot Leaven literally five, ten minutes ago and it's a steep pull up from the village and today we're doing Nagrukin and Binny and Moor in the Mamores. I've probably collected too much H2O there. I've got two litres. I've got 800, 800 and 400. Aye, that's two litres. <laughs> and they also drank about 800 ml as well, so I've took on board nearly three litres of water. It's a cracking view that. You've got the Papi Glencoe there. And on the other side, you've got Ben Akalik with Loch Leaven winding its way down into Kimlock Leaven. Well, that took one hour to reach the track. Now we're going to be bashing up the hillside to pick up the ridge of Nagrukin. This is a bit of a slog by the way. I'm not surprised what islands I've got you coming down this way. But uh, I remember coming this way in 2010 and there was fresh snow overnight and we had a break and I made this big massive snowball and the plan was, was to just push it down towards Kimmel Leaven. It would gather more snow and it would just wipe out the whole village. But seriously though, the fresh snow was a nightmare. Just kept slipping in it. Can just make out the derelict Mamor Lodge there. I actually featured in a Netflix series called My Son. It was a bit like a Scottish take-in. We had James McAvoy instead of Liam Neeson. It's actually quite good. Not brilliant, but definitely watchable. And it was in the, the set in the campsite as well, further down the road there. So I play Scottish scenery. It's 20 past one now. We've got about 150 meters just to the top of the ridge there, which is 880 on the map. And then once you're on the ridge, it's a fairly easy stroll up to the summit. But we're just having a wee breather, bite to eat, before we do this last pull up. And to be honest, there's absolutely no rush because we're camping out tonight, so plenty of time. That's us reached. The 880 meter spot height, which marks the start of the ridge up to Nagrukin just behind me there. That took pretty much three hours to get here, so that's not too bad. And I imagine we'll get up to the summit in what, half an hour. Well, this is frustrating, folks. Getting so close to the summit, but the cloud has dropped and put us right into the clag. And I just don't know if we're going to get a view or not. It is fairly windy, so it could shift. So we're going to have a macro wrap, I reckon, and hope it clears. Boom! Now, Grukin in the bag with no views. Well, that's three and a half hours from car to summit. If we're here about an hour earlier, we may have got a view. There's maybe 70% chance of cloud free Munro's. It's been pretty accurate to be fair. It did say the higher tops would be shrouded in cloud, but this one's been pretty much clear all day until like 20 minutes before we got here. So we're going to drop down. Kev, what's the time? Wrap a clock. Grab a wrap down there. Hope this clears while we eat. Well, we're fed and watered, and we waited, and we waited a little bit longer. But nah, the cloud just isn't clearing for us at all. It keeps sweeping in, 
and then there's more just sweeping in and then more just sweeps in. So I don't think we're getting a view. So we're a little bit downhearted. Kevin's even talking about going home rather than camping out. Well, his missus is. I don't know, we'll see. Be a shame not to get a view of the day like. So after 14 years, it's good to be back on this little ridge. We absolutely shat ourselves on this ridge by the way. So there was fresh snow overnight. It was just topped with a snowaret and I never had a scoop what to do. But luckily we had a chap called Dave with us. He'd done a bit in the Alps and we got the ice axes out, crampons on, and he just walked on top of the snowaret and me and Phil followed Dave, <laughs> honestly. I've never been so scared in all my life on the mountains. It just took an age to get across this ridge. So being on it today, I'm kind of looking at it and thinking, well, yeah, it's narrow, but I wouldn't exactly say it was like knife edge narrow. But I suppose the snow adds a bit of a different dimension to it, especially when you're a bit of a novice. So I'll just spin the camera around and show you what the ridge looks like. You'll have to excuse the clag though. Yeah, so I remember after walking across the snow aret, we then had to go down one side of the mountain, kick steps, dig the ice axe in. I remember traversing across here and that was really quite scary. I suppose looking down, I mean you could escape down there now but covered in snow, it would be pretty tricky. Now my GoPro isn't on the fisheye mode, so what you see should be pretty much realistic in real life, because there's nothing worse when you're watching ridge videos. It's got the super wide angle on, and it just really makes the ridge look two, three times more scary than what it actually is. Well, that's a cracking little ridge walk. That's over now though. Now we're going to send up here. I remember back in the day, breathing a bit of a sigh of relief when we got here as well. Okay. Woo! Thank God that's over with. But no problem in summer. Well, if Ben Nevis can get out of the cloud, there is hope yet. It's closed back in now, right enough, but you get my drift. Right, so we've got one little drop just down here, and then the last pull up to Binny and Moore, and then it's decision time where we're going to camp tonight. So we've got a safe option of dropping down to the Lochins, but I do fancy pitching out at the end of this ridge here. It should be just below the clag. Um, it's a bit higher up to get a view as well, so if it doesn't prove, we should at least get a view tonight. Well, look at that for a view, folks. Not bad at all. That's Skurild Moor, which is a Munro. This one here is the one we're hoping to camp on, and hopefully get a nice view down to the lock-ins there. Now, I need to fact check myself, but I'm sure this is the highest in the range of the Mamores. If I'm wrong, I'm sure you'll let me know, but I'm pretty sure it is. Not sure which one's the summit. I think it's this block here. And there's a the little awkward outlier. So it's just gone four o'clock, plenty of time for pitching, so we're just going to a little donder along this ridge over to the north side, have a little goosey, see what it's like.
back in that winter epic we should have retraced our steps and returned down the other way for some reason we got confused we got the map out and we decided to head off the north side of Binning Moor so we came along this ridge to be honest I don't remember it being that bad but being on it today you wouldn't want to fall down to the east there it's quite a uh, it's quite a drop to the west side it's not that bad but what happened was when we got to the end of the ridge it was really steep and it was like littered with boulders above the snow and we had to like turn and face the rock kick steps to get down and uh, I had a fall I had to self arrest it was it was really quick it was over with very quickly but my axe wasn't in my hand it was just about away I just managed to grab it at the last minute stop myself from sliding down this gully probably to my death and then later on we were going down we were in facing the rock using the ice axe for leverage and keep ourselves secure my friend Phil was right above me coming down as well and I said to Phil go and move over a bit because if you fall you're taking me with you so he moved over to the other side and then he fell as well but his one was a lot worse than me I just remember hearing him scream but I couldn't see him and uh, I got a bit of a fright and when we got down to the ball we met with Dave and Dave's actual words were he thought Phil was coming out in a body bag so <laughs> Phil was really lucky to stop himself falling at the last minute but yeah it was a proper epic and uh, it's definitely clipped my wings I'll tell you that So I had my self-arrest just about here somewhere where I got a fright and then we relaxed once we got on this ridge down here that was absolutely fine and you can probably see in the camera it just comes to an abrupt end really steep on that side and that's where Phil had his like 50 metre slide down there and then we walked out around there it was head torches just at the end but surprisingly we managed to do all that in February We are just heading up this Munro top, Skur Eld Beak, and then we're going to drop off slightly to find the elusive bowling green for pitching up tonight. The plan is, is we've got a nice view over to Skur Eld Moor with the lock ins. I'm not asking too much. So, uh, yeah, we'll get to the top of this little hill and we'll see what the script is on the other side. Look at this for a view, folks. Right, I think we've settled on two pitches. I'm going to go right here. With a nice grandstand view out to Skurild Moor. Just don't want to sleepwalk in the night. Kevin's just going a little bit further down. The inside of my tent is a bit skew with. I don't think I have the perfect rectangle. Check that thing going its dinger, by the way. That'll probably do. Yeah, so I don't think this is pitched perfectly, but I'll do tonight. I am starving, folks. Get some noodles on the go. I've got these bad boys here. Coca chicken flavour. Curry flavour is far better by the way if you buy these in Costco in bulk. In fact these are pretty bland but they'll fill a hole. Yes, we're on the boil. Let's get some noodleage on the go. I am famished. Happy days. 
let that do its thing. And I'll just pop that lid on and just let that hydrate. I'm getting a bit bored of Summit Teat Meals, so I'm trying this LYO one for a little change of scenery. It is our pasta with gorgonzola with spinach sauce and almond flakes. So it's rather spinachy. Spinachy. Now let's try it. Mmm, that's really good. Let's just dunder along to the end of the ridge, see what's happening there. Not very much it would seem, just a long descent back down to Kinloch Leaven. It is a 29 and the temperature is 11 degrees. Actually feels colder, maybe it's just because I'm tired. Honestly, I put on a bit of music on my phone. Uh, I was just drifting off, I'm trying to keep awake a bit longer. Because you know what it's like if you fall asleep too early, you wake up about back 11, 12 and then <laughs> that's like you. So uh, aye, I'm just trying to hold off till 10, but I think I may just, I'm making a wee, uh, Horlicks, I might just turn in after that, so it should just be after nine. Can I actually see my breath, look. This is mid-July, believe it or not. <laughs> Typical, just as I'm starting to nod off, the wind's picked up. Sounds quite noisy, but it's probably about 10 to 15 miles per hour, but enough to keep me awake. Anyways, I'm going to try and get some shot eye hill. Definitely catch us in the morning. Good morning, campers. Oh, dearie me, that was a, a pure sleep last night, by the way. <sighs> Wind picked up and it's really drafty in here, so I may have to look into getting a solid dinner. Because, uh, yeah. I had to put on an extra layer, I've got my little gilet on uh, with my micro fleece under that as well, so I usually just sleep in base layers. Yeah, it was really cold, a bit hungry as well, so that doesn't help. Uh, so yeah, I'm not even going to show you outside because I know for a fact, just peeking under the fly sheet I can see that it's busy outside and there's no views going. So uh, yeah, it seems to be a reoccurring theme for me and Kevin. picked up a, a box of these on Amazon because I tried one in my accommodation with Nicola and they were really good. So yeah, and it works a lot cheaper than buying the pots in the supermarket. I think it was a, I want to say 20 pounds for 30 sachets. So it wasn't bad. Really good actually. Like him. Maybe a bit sweet. Right, well, I may as well give you a current situation. So I'll just unzip this. There we go. It's actually looking like the sun could break through. So uh, all is not lost yet, folks. Just about enough room in here to pack up. I 
we have retraced our steps back along the ridge and we're going to drop down here it took 15 minutes just to come back over you'll see the cairn just behind me there that marks the spot where we head down to the lock-ins at uh, Scurrill Moor Right, here's the junction of the path Crossroads in fact So, that way back out to Kinloch Leaven That way for Scurrill Moor And that way for Binion Beak I was watching Andy Murray's last game at Wimbledon just another week there and then he obviously had his uh, interview with Sue Barker at the end and I tell you what, it did bring a tear to a glass eye and there was a bit that really resonated with me it's when he said he wanted to play tennis forever and I, I totally get that you know, I want to hill walk forever but in reality, you know it's obviously not possible whether it be through ill health injuries or just old age it's just it's a fact of life isn't it but uh, yeah I can totally get where Andy Murray was coming from and when you read the comments everybody's telling Andy Murray to retire well perhaps he maybe should if he wants to protect his body but it's the thing that he loves doing most so it's a, it's a bit of a catch 22 and I know myself I've walked with injuries I've had dodgy knees, dodgy hips in the past that I have to stretch to make sure I don't flare up again and I know a lot of other walkers that push through the pain barrier just to keep on walking and then they end up needing like knee replacements and all that and I kind of think uh, if I ever needed a, a knee replacement the waiting list on NHS is years long and I think you're looking about 12 grand if you go private so yeah, I just wait prolong my body as long as possible obviously you can't plan for everything though you don't know what life will throw at you <laughs> anyway this is a bit of a could go down a morbid road so I'll, I'll try and change up the subject now and say that things are improving every moment of this walk the clouds are pretty much lifted off all the tops so uh, Binny and Beak should be cloud, uh, cloud free by the time we get there Making good progress folks, we've been going an hour and 15 minutes We were camped just up here last night It's the summit of Binion Moor Just met two hikers there They set off at half four this morning And they're doing all ten of them or moors Going east to west So they must have checked in uh, Glen Nevis done this one first so uh, I have been going four hours now now they've got another nine to do <laughs> go on yourself they should manage it if they're fit enough anyways this is a cracking situation here we're at the lock-in just below Binny and Beak just seeing if there's any pictures about Ben Nevis, Carmore Gerag, and Ulach Beak. Dump the pack. Now for the 200 meter push up to the top. Superb boss. Check out Ben Nevis by the way. Love that bank of clouds just below it. Looks really good. Yes.
Bye, bye. Right, just picked up the rucksack. I don't know. Right, just picked up the rucksack. Now we're ready to head across, pick up Kevin's gear, and then do this bad boy here. Screw it more. It's been a wee while since I've last spoke to you, but we now find ourselves almost at the base of Scurild Moor, so that's the next and last target of the day. That path was really good, that should make decent progress between the two tops, so uh, we're not too fast that our route's a bit skew with, almost like a, a hate shape rather than a circuit. Superb boss. Happy days. I love when you just pop out like that onto the ridge. Yeah, I remember this little narrow ridge in winter. It's been a bit tad spicy for a winter softy like me anyway. Superb. Right, now the last push up to the summit here. Whew. And there it is, folks. Monroe number four of the weekend. Skewer Eldmore. Get in there. Kevin, what's the time? Rap o'clock. Rap o'clock. Boom. And half the viewers will be going, that looks minging. <laughs> We're doing an alternative route down because on the other side of the Lockins there's a stalker's path which peters out at 800 metres. That's 1,010 metres, so we might have 200 metres of boulder hopping and then we'll get on to the path rather than retracing our steps and having to walk back around the Lockins. Hopefully that makes sense. You'll know it if you've been here before. So far so good folks. My nice innovates are nice and grippy in this. <laughs> oh, what are you saying? Oh. Kev just a little bit premature there. <laughs> okay. That wee slip, oh these grip magic, whoa! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's trying to say it's a boulder moved. Excuses, excuses. I would definitely recommend this route, folks, going up or coming down, especially if you've got good vis and it's dry. Anyways, folks, it's a long descent now, back down to Kinloch Leaven, so it seems like a good time to wrap up this video. So thanks very much, and I'll catch you next one. Cheers. Shlea.